Hello ladies and gentlemen, Tavaron here and welcome to Friday Night Magic. Again, at last. I do apologize for the lack of Friday Night Magic for the last two weeks. Unfortunately, I had been very sick. I had the flu for two weeks, started to feel a little bit better for a couple of days, and then started coughing again and was just told by the doctor today that I have walking pneumonia. So that's great. My voice is somewhat back. I do apologize if it comes through as less than enjoyable, but I'm not going to let it stop me from making another Friday Night Magic. It's been too long, and we have Oath of the Gatewatch and Shadows over Innistrad. We are going to start off our exploration of this format with humans, mono-white humans. I'm going to go through the deck here quickly. We are playing uh, Kithion, hero of Akros, which is the flip White Planeswalker, Anointer of Champions, and you'll notice that almost everything in the deck that is a creature is a human. There's a reason for that, because there's a lot of human synergy. We're playing Expedition Envoy. These guys replaced, rather, the Elite Vanguards in the Deck Builder set, and we're Militia Captains. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control four or more creatures, transform Hanweir Militia Captain to Westfell Cult Leader. And Westfell Cult Leader's power and toughness are equal to the number of creatures you control. And at the beginning of your end step, put a 1-1 white and black human cleric creature onto the battlefield. We are maxed out on those. Uh, also, Thalia's Lieutenant. When Thalia's lieutenant enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on each other human you control. Whenever another human enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on Thalia's lieutenant. Two Knight of the White Orchid because they are humans. First strike and mana is nice. Full set of Consul's lieutenant, the ever-present renowned first strike pumper dude. A full set of Topin Free Blades, again, going with the human synergy there. We're running two Celestial Flares to deal with hexproof things, such as uh, Gaia's Revenge or Plated Crusher, things of that nature, if the game gets that far. Three, Warping Well. This may seem a little odd, but what these do, most importantly, is counter sorcery spells. And what are sorcery spells? Languish and Planar Outburst. It's so very important for this deck to counter board wipes. Uh, and less useful is the exile creature with power, toughness, one or less, or put a 1-1 one -one Eldrazi Scion onto the battlefield. Although it does become useful at times. Two, Declaration in Stone. I don't know about the duels metagame, but I expect in regular magic standard this is going to be the best removal spell in the format. So I figured we'd run a play set of these. Exile target creature and all other creatures its controller controls with the same name as that creature. That player investigates for each non-token creature exiled this way. So that is great. If you're not familiar with the investigate terminology there, uh, Shadows of Innistrad has investigated as a keyword. What it means is they put out a zero cost artifact, which is a clue, and it stays on the board and they can pay two and sack it to draw a card. Or we can if we happen to get clues, which we can, with Bygone Bishops, one of the few non-human creatures in the deck. It's a 3 mana, 3-2 three flyer, and whenever you cast a creature spell with converted mana cost 3 or less, you investigate. So this is some nice card advantage as well as an evasive creature. We're running the full set of Always Watching. Um, in my opinion, maybe the best anthem ever printed. Uh, and when I say anthem, I'm referring to Glorious Anthem. Uh, Non-token creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1, and have Vigilance. So it's kind of the opposite of Intangible Virtue, which was in the last set and did that for token creatures. One, Archangel of Tithes. I think Archangel of Tithes is in a really good position right now. Uh, it's a 3-5 flyer for 4. As long as it is untapped, creatures can't attack you or a Planeswalker you control unless their controller pays 1 for each of those creatures. As long as Archangel of Tithes is attacking, creatures can't block unless their controller pays 1 for each of those creatures. And with Intangible Virtue out, you get both of those benefits because it is untapped and attacking. Kithion's Regulars, 4-3 uh, Renown. The big draw to Kithion's Regulars is the ability to pay 2 white and tap a creature. 
And you can do that as many times as you want up to the limit of your mana because it doesn't require that the irregulars are tapped themselves. One, Gideon, ally of Zendikar. Uh, I don't know that I need to explain Gideon too much. He is a great all-around dude. Uh, it does sadden me that he pumps out tokens, but they are knight allies and they're two twos. You can't have everything. And one, Archangel Avison. Archangel Avison is a monstrous, monstrous girl. She is a Sarah Angel with Flash. Uh, five mana Flash Flying Vigilance. When Archangel Avison enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. When a non token, or sorry, when a non angel creature you control dies, transform Archangel Avison at the beginning of the next upkeep. And. When she transforms, she becomes Avis of the Purifier, who is also flying 6-5 powered toughness. When this creature transforms into Avis and the Purifier, it deals 3 damage to each other creature and each opponent. Pretty beastly. Our mana base is 14 Plains, 1 Waste, 2 Westfall Abbey, and Wastes are sporting the new colorless mana symbol. New to Magic Duels, not so new to Paper Magic. A uh, colorless that was previously one in a circle is now represented by this diamond shape here. And costs that require that diamond shape may only be paid by actual colorless sources. The previously seen, as you can see here, uh, symbol with the number inside the circle now refers to generic mana, which can be paid with any color of mana. We are running two Westfell Abbeys. It produces colorless. For 5 and tap it and pay a life, you put a 1-1 one, one white and black human cleric creature token onto the battlefield. For 5 and sack 5 creatures, you transform Westvale Abbey, then untap it, and it transforms into Ormondal Profane Prince, who is a 9-7 flying, lifelink, indestructible haste. Yeah. I have not yet gotten to flip Ormondal Profane Prince. I've been in the position several times that I could have done it, but my opponents conceded. And one of the great changes to the patch that released these two sets onto Magic Duels is when your opponent concedes now, you can choose to leave the game and it still gives you the win. Joyous day. We're running three Foundry of the Consoles, which is mostly a colorless mana source for Warping Well, and four Evolving Wilds. And Evolving Wilds can get Waste because Waste is a basic land. Well, that's the list. Let's see if we can beat some face. All right. I think this is a hand worth keeping. We've got turn one and turn two plays. We are running 24 land, so that gives us a great chance to hit our land drops. I would also like to mention that if my commentary cuts out for what seems a little bit of a long stretch at certain points, that it is probably because I have edited out coughing and or sneezing and would like to protect your ears from such unpleasant sounds. Also, I may be trying to conserve my voice a bit, as I would like to still be able to do a bit of recording even though I am still down, and losing my voice is losing my voice completely is not super conducive to that. Looks like we're playing a mirror possibly of sorts. I'm gonna go ahead and attack first, see if our opponent is interesting, interested even in taking this trade. I would not mind at all if they did. Looks like they would maybe rather, yeah, rather go ahead and try to race us. Well, hopefully we can top deck a land here so that we can start our bygone bishop and the rest of these higher casting cost spells in our hand. I will not be blocking their ally there. Because I too fancy racing. Ooh, looks like they may be on green-white humans. Or just green-white. That happens to run Expedition Envoy. Also, if we don't top deck a land, uh, another card that I would not mind drawing would be Thalia's Lieutenant. Ah, Kinsable Skirmisher. Okay, so they are, they do seem to have a human. Oh no, that's not human. That's Kithkin. So they're not on humans then. 
I'm gonna give the expedition envoy plus one plus one till end of turn. Yep. See if they want to come in. They do. I will be taking that three. Skip. Come on, land or Thalia's lieutenant. That's what I want to see. And when I say land, it needs to be a plains. And there it is. Awesome. Always watching to the battlefield. And again, I do not mind trading off my envoy for their Kinsible Skirmisher. That's a one mana creature trading for a two mana creature. And I'm almost always good for that. Or happy with that. However is more appropriate to phrase, I know not. And yet I speak the stream of consciousness that is nonsense. And you watch. What does that say about you? I don't know what it says about you, but I like you all the same. You keep doing you and I'll keep doing me. All right, three land for the Aponaut. All right. Looks like our opponent is swinging. They must be, they must have something to drop post combat then. And I'm not going to block because I suspect there is a wild size lurking in our opponent's hand or some other pump spell or a celestial purge. Lots of different tricks that could get us right here. And when I say get us, I mean do something we really don't like. Like when you play a fetch land and sack it and your opponent stifles the fetch land so that you lose a life and don't get your land. Ooh, turn timber guide. All right, so this board is getting a bit cumbersome. Though I think I'm not too upset about trading this token free blade for two creatures. So I believe I'm going to offer that trade. See if my opponent is willing to take it. Two for ones seem good to me. And no, they are not willing. So the question is, do I use mana the most efficiently and play Kithion's Irregulars, or play Bygone Bishop? I think I'm going to play the Irregulars because that also gives us options of tapping things down starting next turn if the Irregulars make it that far. Now the opponent is taking their time thinking this over. Rather convoluted board state, I suppose. And this always watching is causing them issues as well. Leaving our creatures on defense while sim simultaneously mounting an offensive. Hmm. Yes, this smacks of wild size, so I'm going to once again skip blocking and take five. If it was something other than Wild Size, something that pumped more, I would suspect that the Turn Timber Guide would attack as well, because then he could trade it off for one of my creatures. Oh. Well, Reprisal is unfortunate. Let's top deck another land, please. Or a one drop. I need to flood the board. There's our land. All right, let's go ahead and continue racing. Our opponent does not have the mana requisite to activate some Blade Elf. They are still two off of that. And they are starting to chump, which makes me extremely, extremely happy. All right, let's do some stuff. There we go, get our clue. 
see what our opponent has for us now. I still really, really suspect they've got a wild size in their hand or pump of some sort. Could be a primal bellow also, I suppose, since they only have two forests out. I don't think it is a titanic strength. I may be wrong in even saying titanic strength is in this iteration of duels, but I think it is. Hmm. Is our opponent going to commit to this attack? Alright, so we got three, four, five, six, seven coming at us. We can swing for ten and put them to one. I think I want to trade here. If they have a pump spell, then so be it. Again, I do think it's a two pump, so I'm going to block with Topin Free Blade on Envoy. That way if it is plus two plus two, then it is a trade. There's the wild size that I had suspected pretty much the whole time was there waiting for us. It is a trade though. We do take a damage as wild size gives trample. Our opponent draws a card. I think we are still in a good position to get there with this. Before attacks, I'm gonna go ahead and sacrifice this clue. Uh, no, I would like to tap the Westvale Abbey. Thank you very much. All right, well, I mean, that's a thing, I suppose. I'm gonna go ahead and play Topin Free Blade here. Get another clue. Then, we will swing for six. Always watching is so good. Hopefully our opponent did not draw another pump spell. But even if they did, I think that we're going to be in fine shape here. And there is the first look that we have at the finished game screen. Joker Raiders have been replaced by AI. You complete, complete this game against an AI opponent. Your rewards will be safe whether you win or lose. Oh, that's nice. So we can play it out and lose against the AI and still get our rewards. But we're going to leave game because we've accomplished what we came for. All right, I think this hand is keepable. Unfortunately, it looks like the opponent has mulliganed to four, which is not going to be conducive to a good game. Go ahead and drop our anointer here. All right, back to back comes into play tapped lands is not great for the opponent either. You know, not to mention that he mulliganed to four and I just realized I cast the anointer instead of the expedition envoy, which I wanted to cast on the first turn there. Well, that's something, I guess, that happens when you've been sick for three straight, straight weeks. Your brain doesn't work super well. All right, well, let's attack. I'm not going to be casting anything this turn. I'm going to be holding up Warping Well on the off chance that in these few cards, our opponent got a Languish. Well... Now that they have Celestial flared us, I suppose I will risk casting a hand wearer Militia Captain. If we hadn't got Celestial flared, I would have definitely been holding up Warping Well to counter a potential Languish. Alright, so we're not getting Languished yet. wonder if our opponent is looking for a land drop here. Okay. 
Well, they definitely have languished mana now. Go ahead and swing for five. And hold up Warping Well. And then next turn we can potentially swing for seven. Coastal Discovery, I think I'm going to counter that. Okay. Keep that card draw at bay. Okay then. Well, let's go ahead and overextend a little bit. See if we can't end this game. Yes, I do want to use this ability. Cast Lieutenant. And we will swing for seven. Putting our opponent to five. Well, unfortunately, there's the languish that I was afraid of. Less fortunately, I have creatures still in hand. Hmm, there's Archangel Avison. Let's go ahead and play Kidion's Irregulars, shall we? Okay. Well, our opponent is putting themselves to two. Alright, well, we'll go Bygone Bishop into Expedition Envoy. Okay. I'm not actually sure how good Anguished Unmaking is, either in paper or online. Three life is quite a lot at times. Um, okay, good game. I will keep this hand. Hopefully if we draw an Expedition Envoy, I will manage to cast it instead of an Order of Champions this time. But barring that, hopefully, yep, hopefully I can't get this wrong. There we go. What is our opponent doing here? Well, Mardu colors. Black, red, white. Don't think we have to be worrying about Crackling Doom. Let's see if we can bait our opponent into using a fiery impulse. I very much doubt it, but Always the off chance. Looks like our opponent may be pay playing a controlish build here. In which case, I would like to draw a colorless mana source. Speak of the devil. Let's go ahead and attack. And we will be holding up Warping Well now. Because there very well could be a Languish forthcoming. Pass to you, friend. Well, there won't be a language this turn. So, we've got four colors here. We have yet to see blue from the opponent. Now we can swing, drop, token, free blade, and still hold up Warping Whale. Which seems good to me. 
anguish done making. Okay. Well, there's three damage to the opponent. Alright. Pass over, see what is in store for us here. Another Evo Wilds. Languish yes, languish no. Fetch yes, for sure, it looks like. Well, there's the fifth color. Are we looking at a Planeswalker deck, perhaps? Very curious about what's going on here. Well, we've got two Declaration and Stones in our hand. Two Warping Oils. Question is, if we don't use one of these Warping Wells to counter something this turn, do we want to spout out a Scion? I don't think we do. Okay, we can declare that guy in stone. Now, they have potential for Planar Outburst as well here. Alright, we'll go ahead and, and declare the Sky Rider in stone. And swing. I may have got the name of that wrong. No, oh, it's a Sky Rider Elf. Okay. And we just commence to beat the opponent down while they dirtle. Dirtle, dirtle, dirtle. I made you out of weight. Radiant Flames. Uh, no thank you. I would prefer that not to happen. Please and thanks. Okay. Taking her up. We cannot kill her this turn in that case. We still have a second warping well, so that's good. Let's go ahead and put our opponent to two. Now we have mana available to activate Westfell Abbey as well. If we don't warping well something else nasty from the opponent. Well, they have done one thing successfully this game and that is make land drops. May see that clue get sacked this turn. Here's a, one of the clue tokens if you'd like to see that. There's Planar Outburst. Pause, please. Counter. And that should be game. Looks like our opponent is not going to concede, but let us swing out. That is quite nice of them. We will attack them. And that will be it for this episode of Friday Night Magic, friends. I do apologize for the shorter length on this one. However, as I mentioned, I am not feeling super well right now. And uh, to be honest, my throat is really scratchy. So... Hopefully I will be in better shape and more entertaining with maybe a better deck because I'm not really sure that this one's that great despite the wins next week. And until then, friends, be excellent to each other.